All right, good evening everybody and welcome to the Daniel Boone Curriculum Instruction Committee meeting. It's February 23rd, 2015 at 6 o'clock p.m. We can go around the table and do a roll call. That would be great. Mary Beth Kiesel. Carol Bates. Mrs. Torsha. Connor Cruz. Brian Doty. David Rathgeb. Mr. Martino. All right, great. Uh, in terms of how this meeting will operate tonight, we are going to hear Mrs. Torsha's presentation on the restoration of full day kindergarten, uh, as long as a discussion on enrollment and staffing needs for the districts that may go along with full day kindergarten or may not. Um, we'll save that for that discussion. Uh, we're going to need to keep public comment limited to the beginning of the meeting and the end of the meeting. This is not going to be a Q&A session for the public. That there hopefully will be an opportunity for that if we move forward with full day kindergarten. But at this point, just for the committee to get information on whether we will make a recommendation to the full board regarding this change in programming. Uh, so that being said, there will be two opportunities for public comment. One coming up as soon as I'm done my little presentation here. Then once at the end of the meeting. Uh, but again, because we're limiting it to the beginning of the end of the, the, end of the meeting, um, please refrain from raising hands, speaking out during the presentation, and following board discussion. So does anybody from the committee have anything to add before we go on to public comment? All right, this is public comment opportunity number one. If you'd like to say anything, please approach the podium, uh, turn on the microphone, and the little red light should turn on, and then state your name and address and then you'll have three minutes to address the committee. You don't need to use all three minutes. Thank you. All right. Connor, is this just in regards to the This is in regard to the entire agenda. So fundraising. Well, I mean, it would be nice if we get topics would be limited to those on the agenda. If we have time at the end of the meeting, if there's something not on the agenda, if you'd like to speak at that point, that would be ideal. All right, is there any public comment? All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to discussion of fundraising during the school day. This is something I asked to be included on the agenda. Uh, I just wanted to have a little bit of a discussion to see um, what the appropriate role of fundraising is in during the school day. And I have some thoughts of my own, and those thoughts are pretty much that it shouldn't be part of the school day. If you want to do fundraising afterwards, that's fine. After 2.30 at the high school, after uh, through 30 of the elementary schools, I think that's appropriate. Uh, but there were two specific fundraisers that I was a little bit concerned with, and I'm not sure if the rest of the committee shares those concerns. If not, we'll drop it and move on. One fundraiser was at the middle school level. Um, I believe there was a Relay for Life team that sold access to cell phones during the lunch period for a dollar. And I had an issue with that because the school rules prohibited electronic devices during the school day. And I don't know, I had an issue with students being asked, they, I, students had the ability to pay money to, in essence, kind of circumvent a school rule. And I'm opposed to that at a few levels. Um, one being, I don't know who these students will be communicating with during the lunch period other than other students. Uh, additionally, I think it sets a, a strange precedent when you can pay money to essentially be allowed to do something that goes against the rules. That was mission number one. Can I address that one? Because my understanding is that the students weren't allowed to be texting or anything like that, that they were being able to pay a dollar to help this um, the, the student team uh, to raise funds. And the team was in the name of their uh, one little girl's grandmother. Um, and it was just for them to be able to listen to music. I, am I correct, Mrs. Rex yeah. Rexroad? Because she you know, was the person that had authorized it. Um, so that was why we didn't really have issue with it. it was just allowing them to access their music. Okay. So um, that's well, where that's it was supposed to be. That's where it was supposed to be limited to. Long. Yes. Okay. I'm glad to hear that that was the situation. It wasn't just texting in middle school cafeteria. But the other area that I wanted to discuss was the matchmaker survey that was given out at the high school. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a tradition, um, and it's done during homeroom, which is not instructional time in the same sense as an English class, but it still is time that students should be studying and all that. And I just wonder what the merit is of, of doing that. I think it's silly, personally. Um, I know Mrs. Bites and I had a conversation about it. I'm not sure if she'd like to, to say anything. Alternatively, maybe it doesn't really matter that much. And this is high school. Maybe if kids want to spend a few dollars to get these results, they right. can. 
but in the context of us being an education system. Well, I'm concerned about the nature of the questions because I understand research that there's three different um, templates that you can use. I'm just wondering who's going to make the decision on which one is selected each year and the appropriate answer to the question as well. My understanding of the matchmaker fundraiser is that it is conducted by the Varsity Club. It is something that's been in place since 2006 that they've been using this as a form of raising funds for this particular club. Um, and I would imagine that the advisor is the person that is choosing the questionnaire. Um, and I don't think that there's been much change in the questionnaire, as she had reflected that she hadn't had any kind of parent, parent complaints, you know, coming back as to inappropriateness of questions. Um, and and the, the, what I agree with, with Mr. Kurtz is that if, if it's a question of continuing to use this fundraiser, should it be administered during homeroom? And that's something I think that we can easily remedy. And I said to him, with a new incoming you know, high school principal coming in, I think he needs to look at the broad spectrum of, of the fundraisers that are occurring at the high school. But I, I do believe that this is something that could be pushed off to the end of the day, that if students are really interested in this um, and want to participate and they love the results, I, I understand there's good feedback. It's not about just being matched up to you know your true love. It's about who you would be best friends with, who, who you're compatible Compatible with it, it gives you know kids a little bit of information about themselves. So, it to me, it didn't seem like it was way out there. But again, I think if the concern is that we're using any time that you know the state is deeming as instructional time, which is from you know the the bell from the start of the day to the bell at the end of the day, that we make sure that this fundraiser takes place you know after the day. Um, same with you know a lot of students will or a lot of clubs will use fundraiser before school starts, which means before the homeroom. They will, if it's a food item and it's not a conflict with our cafeteria uh, policy or, or what we're doing there, it may get, it may occur during lunchtime because that's not instructional time. We can't count that time as instructional time for our school day and then after school. So we are pretty responsible with regard to that. Um, this one had not come to my attention and I, you know, try to take note of, of most things that are coming through, but we certainly will address that and, and make sure that we have that pushed back to the another time of the day. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, if, if it's, it's just not in school and it never went home, it was just done during that? Yes. So the parents wouldn't have ever seen the questions or be able to comment on the appropriateness of it? Correct. I, I believe that, I don't believe, I, I would have to look to Megan, maybe she would know better as far as what the questions and maybe even Dane who has a lot of experience with the, the, the form. Um, again, it's, I, I think I did give you some questions. Did I, were you able to open that document? I thought yes. I had them here, but I, they I evidently. I didn't see any questions. Yeah. There were questions that were attached, but is that the normal survey? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I read them, but I, I mean, I, did, I didn't think, I mean, that's a cute idea. I didn't think much of the, I didn't think there was much offensiveness in the questions at mm -hmm. all. It's I, think it's, I think it's almost fun. Right. It's completely voluntary. The kids, you know, that do sign up for it enjoy it. Um, they don't have to pay anything in the in the front end of um, you know filling it out. If they decide they don't want to participate, then their survey gets thrown away. They never get to see it. Um, and and kids just kind of like to see who they're matched with. <laughs> All right. Anything else on that topic, or can we move on? All right. Thank you, Bill, for looking into that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. Next up on the agenda is kindergarten presentation and the discussion on enrollment and staffing needs moving forward. Mrs. Torsha will be leading this presentation. Well, I'm going to be doing this with Mrs. Kiesel. This is definitely a team effort, and um, I don't want to discount all of the rest of my administration that has also um, contributed to putting our presentation together. I just want to start off that the proposal of um, going to a full day kindergarten is not, a, it's not about a debate. This is not what we're doing here. We're just using data that we have available from when we had a full day kindergarten program to what had occurred when we went into a half day program and the benefits that a full day program does provide to our Daniel Area School District. So we're not trying to assert, you know, the importance or value of a child being at home with their, their parent and the, you know, wonderful experiences, the rich experiences that, you know, children have, you know, being with their parents. But we also recognize 
recognize that not every parent has that opportunity to spend with their child. But, you know, there are single families, you know, that, that are working and their children don't get to spend the quality time because they're working, they're trying to, to make ends meet. We know that there's, you know, that population that we serve as well. So we're just trying to bring to, to the curriculum committee and to the public that if we were that we feel as administration that this is the most opportune time to be able to put this program back into place because I can stand here and tell you that we can do it without it increasing one dollar in our budget. The way the, the proposed budget has been um, planned out for the next five years by our um, business manager, we will be able to support this program. And I also want to state on the front end that we are not looking to use any state or federal funding to be able to promote this program. That this is done through the general um, fund, the way that our budget has been set up and created. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and start. I'll hand this over to Mrs. Kiesel. If anybody can't hear us, we'll pick up a microphone or stand closer to one. Thank you, Mrs. Dorsha. I'm going to start off with just a few fast facts. There are 500 school districts in Pennsylvania which offer some type of kindergarten program. 429 out of 500 offer full day kindergarten. And here in Berks County, there are 18 school districts. 16 offer full day kindergarten. Daniel Boone Area School District is one of two districts who do not offer full day kindergarten. The next slides just <laughs> briefly illustrate some of the pros and cons of full day kindergarten. One of the pros is that a full day program helps close the achievement gap. It increases educational, social, emotional, and physical opportunities where children can learn and explore at a slower pace and in more depth. It also prepares our students for the rigorous new Pennsylvania standards. And because we had a full day program, we can show data showing that the achievement gap has been closed. We, we, have, we have good data to show you that you know, students are performing um, at a, a, a better rate or are being able to you know, take in information and keep it longer through that full day program. Um, the cons that we're pointing out are that would, it would require additional classroom space. We have that space because how we're going to be promoting this program is by reassigning some staff. So we know that we're going to have those classrooms available at both Monopoly Elementary Center and Avenue Elementary Center. So class, does, class space does not become a problem. We also know that a con is that class sizes are going to have to go up somewhere. And we're willing to support higher class sizes in the fourth and fifth grade level if we know that on the front end, we're going to be able to get something else, that we're going to be able to you know, bring in all of those children that you know, are, are coming in as kindergartners and you know, to be able to support that program. So we feel as though that's something that we would need to you know, be able to compromise on, and that would be uh, some increased class size. Class sizes that I'm looking at right now are in the 25 and 26 um, students per class in fourth and fifth grade in order for us to be able to reassign staff. Um, other areas that it would say within, you know, and that's still within our guidelines. So we also know that with that, that um, con of increased class sizes, the Ready to Learn grant provides money for additional support. So if we know that we have to have uh, larger numbers in those classes, we know that we can bring in some people from year to year. They're not, they're not employees of the Daniel Boone Area School District. They don't become a part of our um, regular salary. They don't become, you know, encompassing getting PCERs and benefits and all that. They are just there supplemental people to be able to support those programs and to make sure that those students are still getting what they need <coughs> being at the class size and, and the student teacher ratio is a little bit different. Additional pros are there, as you can see. Go ahead, Mary Beth. Some of the additional pros are that it increases our ability to identify learning challenges. In other words, when teachers have a longer time to spend with children uh, in a full day schedule as opposed to a half day, then they get to know the kids better and they have more opportunity to identify some of the kids' challenges with learning. 
We also know that it saves money and resources on future interventions, such as special education, um, reading programs, or reading instruction, individualized at the third, fourth, and fifth grade level, where we are usually receiving funds for that, and middle school. So it also increases time for reading, math, and speech interventions. For instance, in a half-day schedule, kids do mathematics three days a week, as opposed to in a full-day program, kids will have math instruction every day. Along with that, we have children, I'm sorry, back one slide, um, Mr. Early. Along with that, we have a, a population of students who are coming into kindergarten. They're, they're, they are our early intervention students. They're children that are typically identified as um, being in need of some type of services, you know, ages three to five. And they, they may be receiving speech services in their daycare or in their home because once you're identified as um, a child find issue at, three, at, at ages three to five, that goes with you. So those children that are coming into kindergarten are coming in and already identified as having a speech IEP. So now they're in school for our, uh, approximately like three hours for a half a day program, two and a half. And um, almost right off the bat, they're gonna lose 20 minutes of educational time with their teacher because they're gonna be pulled out for their speech ther therapy services at least two to three times a week. Um, and those, those um, speech classes could go anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending if they're really intensive. I have seen some going 30 minutes or two times a week. So that, that's important to be able to in like in their day. Additional pros are full day kindergarten will eliminate the need for midday busing at $93,000 a year. It also increases the district revenue by increasing student population who may purchase lunch, estimated at $60,000 a year. Another pro would be that it may attract young families who are looking for homes and buying homes in the district. Now that $60,000 a year is definitely an estimate and that was provided by Mr. Miller, our assistant business manager, but he did take into account breakfast, um, uh, bought breakfast, lunch, and perhaps a la carte. He said anywhere from 50 to 60, he felt his best estimate might have been right around 60,000, but regardless, it would be additional funds coming in into that area that we're you know, struggling a little bit with. How we plan to do this is reallocate limited resources to maximize the positive impact of a high quality early childhood education program. We want to reallocate some, uh, some staff at the higher end or the higher grade levels and to be able to put them into the kindergarten you know, area and to be able to expand that day. Um, why are we doing this? Because we think it's going to produce long-term uh, um, benefits. We, we think that we're going, that as a board, as a district, that you're going to get a bigger bang for your buck by investing into a child's education very early on than us just doing it at the back end. And, and some of the following slides will illustrate uh, positive aspects of a full day program. This next slide is the number of kindergarten referrals for special education. The last year we had a full day kindergarten was the 2010-2011 school year. <coughs> In that year we had 13 kindergarten students excuse me, referred for special education out of 273 students. In the first year of half-day kindergarten, which was 2011-2012, we had 26 students referred for special education. And our enrollment went down. And more importantly, and we apologize for not having the follow-up data, but I'm sure that the first grade um, enrollment would have also supported that there were more numbers that were identified because we're not able to get those interventions in in that half day kindergarten like we could in, in a full day. Um, typically in a full day program we would have a push in program where our reading specialists would be coming right into a kindergarten classroom and really be able to support those students and be able to do and provide that small group differentiated instruction. 
That's not happening five days a week, and we'll show that um, in a later slide, but that's very, very valuable to a child early on um, in their, their education. I wanted to mention the third grade benchmark. Um, when you look at a school performance profile, which is kind of a report card that the state gives schools, third grade, there's a calculation between zero and 100. Third grade reading score counts double. So it counts two times, and that just demonstrates the importance of reading success at third grade. Reading proficiently by the end of third grade can be a make or break benchmark in a child's educational development. Academic success, as defined by high school graduation, can be predicted with reasonable accuracy by knowing someone's reading skills by the end of third grade. And we understand that there's data out there that supports that you know this is where more or less levels out, and there can be data that shows that you know it's not that significant. But we've experienced it going from a full day to a half day program, which we'll show in the upcoming slide. Look at this slide. Um, it is the third grade study island benchmark assessment. That is a test that we give every third grader at the beginning of the year see where they are in mastering the standards for that year. We did a comparison with full day versus half day students. So in other words, kids who had a full day program and kids who had a half day program. August 2013 is, first third grade is the first third grade class to have had full day kindergarten. August last. August 2014 reflect, reflects our first class to have half day kindergarten. And if you look at the top of the graph, you can see comparison <coughs> of math. The kids that were in the 2014 class and then compared to the kids who were in the 2013 full day class. You can see how many more kids were what we call proficient. That green bar shows the percentage of kids who are proficient or able to master that material. Right. If you look at the blue bars, the one is, is that 78? Yeah, 78.78%. 78 and the um, for class of 2014, and 41% for class of 2013 were below basic. So you can see how many more students were below basic, or in other words, were not proficient on the, the benchmark assessment in students that had the half-day program. Can go back for a second, Mr. Thank you. Um, we have a similar study in, at the bottom of the graph, and that illustrates reading, or what we refer to as ELA, English Language Arts. Similar situation, if you look at the blue bars, those are the kids who were not proficient. So the kids in 2013, only 61% of them were not proficient. Compared to the kids who had half day, 80% of them were not proficient. And what I'd like to point out is the fact that we have no one showing advance. So the children that had the advantage of having a full day kindergarten, when they took this assessment, we did have some that measured in the advance in both the reading and math, and then in comparison to children that didn't have that same opportunity, were not showing advanced um, at all in reading and math. So along with the below basic going out, we're also seeing the proficient and advanced going backwards. So that, that's concerning to us, and that's why, again, we're here you know, recommending this program. Hard time oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What about, I'm sorry, the years prior to that where we had full day, did, is there other, I mean, does that data go back and yes. continue to support that, that yes. pattern? Yes. Actually, did you go back 
So when we had it went from half day, I don't know day, if we would have, have so and I don't know if I have if we have that if anybody has kept that data. Is this trend replicated in other data? The PSSA scores yeah. does it show this? Well, PSSA, I mean, this is very disturbing that seventy eight and a half percent is below basic in third grade. Um, I don't well, you have to remember that this assessment is at, you're looking at the beginning of the year. Oh, so they're supposed to be. Right. Well, you're not going to see PSSA because third grade doesn't take PSSA, and this third grade class, do. Uh, we don't get their data until after So right. this third grade that's currently in third grade, we wouldn't have any support for. We're going to go. We're, we're going to move on. We have a. Mrs. Rocha, I, I have a question. In your previous, on the previous slide, it said that by the end of third grade is when that was the critical point. Right. And we don't want to reach that point and then determine that it's too late. Correct. But what does the data look like at the end of third grade? Well, we wouldn't have fourth, this fourth, year's data. Right. We don't we have, have this year's data. Okay. And we don't have a fourth grade group to compare to because the, this third grade class is the last, is, is the first class that did not have full day kindergarten. Okay. So. We'll we're, 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 we're focusing on, you know, the, the, those two comparisons right okay. now. Go ahead. Sure. This next slide just illustrates a half-day schedule as compared to a full-day schedule. We did a weekly comparison. We have reading and we had reading every day in a half-day schedule and also in a full-day schedule. That's whole group reading. Where we start to... Uh, differentiate is with small group reading at centers. And small group is the reading where the teacher is able to meet with small groups of students and work with them where they are. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's a more individual approach. Um, and so in a half-day program, every other day, teachers had the opportunity to deliver small group reading and kids to centers, full-day program daily. Math. Kids receive math instruction three days a week in a half-day program. In a full-day program, they had math every day. Science and social studies, we did not include in a half-day program. We did not include in a half-day program. It was incorporated daily in a full-day program. Another really important subject area is writing. We all know that's one of our focuses in our district is to improve writing. Kid writing is a really important way to start writing. We start in kindergarten, and in a full day program, we were able to offer kid writing every day, and a half day program every other day. Of course, recess and a half day program is non existent, and in a full day program, it was daily. So we know that that part of a child's day is equally important. We know that giving kids time to play in, in more of a less structured setting, they learn as well. And then specials, we have we have half, we have one day for specials in a half day program, and we had daily specials in a full day program. The other thing that um, kindergarten has gone without, and that is field trips, because they're only in school for a half a day. It's been very difficult for us to um, support them going out or you know being able to do it in the time frame. So that suffered drastically, and there were a lot of great things that happened at the school um, that have been you know take it back a little bit with the, the half day program so these are just some expectations that you know we know that the, the children need to meet by the end of the year and yes we are meeting them at the end of you know kindergarten with a half day program with working extremely hard with you know rushing through on um, things a little bit faster than what you know the teachers would like we are uh, you know having children being able to name upper and lower case letters, match those letters, compare adventures and experiences, retell familiar stories. That is happening. I don't want to you know, disillusion anyone that those things aren't happening, but I don't think that the children are able to carry those skills over as well because they're done a little bit faster. They're not able to be repeated as, um, as much you know, with the routine of doing something. If you start a story you know, one day, um, typically you could probably continue it. They might have to stop it. There might be days in between. There's, there's just different things that are happening with result of you know, the half day. So, <coughs> next one, Mr. Hurley. Uh, some more things that they are uh, able to do, use combination of drawing, dictate, writing, to describe an event. 
That takes place much later in the year. That's not happening on the front end of kindergarten. And it's taking even longer with it being a half day because if something has to get pushed back, sometimes this is what gets pushed back. Um, they're taking part in classroom conversations, following rules for discussions. Um, they're learning to listen. That, that, that's something that you know, is starting to be applied very early on in the kindergarten classroom. Those things you know, um, are doing well. I think the routine, if you've ever gone into a kindergarten classroom, whether it's at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year, there's a lot of routine that the teacher does. Um, and, and I'm sure, regardless of half day or full day, they would still continue to repeat because you know, you're still working with five-year-olds and their attention spans are a little bit you know, much shorter. So those are some um, expectations with math. Again, compare two groups of objects to tell which group is either has more, or compare two written numbers to tell which is greater. Just giving you an idea of what the, the curriculum looks like. Um, they're acting out addition and subtraction word problems. This becomes a little bit more difficult. I don't know that the teachers are able to get out the manipulatives as much as they used to um, in being able to do some of these math um, problems and um, you know, to, to show them the manipulatives are so important for you know, young children. It's really important for anybody that's, that's learning because if you can you know, show a one-to-one -one correspondence, it's a lot easier to, to retain it. And But there's always cleanup, there's always set up, so your lessons tend to be a little bit shorter or you know, just getting, you know, going through them. You just have to, you have to just block out large blocks of time. Next slide, Mr. Hurley. This is Dibbles. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the term <coughs> Dibbles. But Dibbles are dynamic indicators of basic early literacy skills. Um, it is an assessment that we give every kindergartner coming in. Um, we also give it to first graders, second graders, and to third graders. Uh, they are a set of measures for assessing the acquisition of early literacy skills. They are designed to identify children who are experiencing difficulty in learning those basic early literacy skills so that we can step in then um, and provide the support early and prevent the occurrence of later reading difficulties. This is a bar graph to show you proficient kindergarten dibbles at the end of the year results. So what we did was we are comparing two years here, 2010-2011, that was full day kindergarten program with 2013-2014 half day kindergarten program. We're comparing LNF, which is letter naming fluency, it's a quick little one minute time test where kids are given a set of letters, both uppercase and lowercase letters, and they are to identify each letter. And we are also looking at nonsense word fluency, which are nonsense words, and I'll give you a few examples of some nonsense words. I have like <laughs> them. Um, Z-I-F, a child would see the letter Z-I-F, and they are supposed to say zip. So they're supposed to know the sounds and put it together just like that. Even though it's not a real word, word it is an indicator of um, reading, a predictor of reading success or reading difficulties. If you look at the graph there, you can see that in 2010-2011, 35% of the students were proficient at the end of the year. If you look at 2013, 2014, only, what is it, about 26%, something like that with proficient. So you can see that the students did much better in a full day kindergarten program. Same thing with nonsense work. What, what numbers would you hope to expect from that test? From the end of the year? That is end of the year, right? Yes, that is end of the year. Uh, it, proficient it, it is 35 great or is that <laughs> well no 35 percent is the number of students that are proficient right that, that were proficient so or 45 per, uh you, you went back go back mr hurley one slide please um 35 percent are were the number that were proficient we obviously would want 100 percent of students being a pro proficient i i'm sure um I'm going to defer to our kindergarten teachers right there. When you're looking at the, the dibbles and your results, what are you looking at overall? 
Whoever wants to jump in, this is Bad Murr, or the rain special, yeah. You said you wanted to be 100% typically there are three groups per mission based a little basic or explicit in the core strategic and intensive, and we typically have about 30% recently. How many of us can have 30% at core, 30% being small strategic intervention, or 30% intensive? So, I mean, ultimately, could we get information while we discuss this and think about it of other years in addition to just 13, 14, and 10, 11? Um, sure, I just want to know what the normal variability is. We would have 12, 13, and 13, 14 because. But some going back. Yeah, when we have I mean, So that we can look at not just the last well, year, but have the kindergarten. I mean, we, we would have to compare full day to our current half day. So we have to still be comparing it to what's happened after we stopped having a full day. Well, in the I end of the day, we're going to It has to be a comparison out. because what, uh, what if 2010-11, I mean, not that I think 35 is great, but what if we had a really smart group that year? If, what was mm -hmm. the year before and the year before? We can, we can, we can get that, the, the data for the earlier years. We, and we couldn't get, you know, the 2014-15. No, that's fine. Right. right. I'm looking at We're back. What's in between? Yeah. You want to go back to see what other full day kindergarten yeah. students have looked like? Sure. So maybe you look at a five year period or a six, seven year, whatever. I mean, but a larger period of time. Okay. And we also see basic and proficient instead of just proficient. <laughs> But we're going to show you intensive in the next slide. Right. It, it doesn't go the same way as it does. Okay. Yeah. Intensive is the other, which are the kids that really need the most work. Right. And, and what intensive means that these students, in order for them to be successful with the reading skills that they're learning, they require intensive support. So whether you get that support from a reading specialist or a reading tutor, Go back those and students need intensive <laughs> support. Um, Similar results, 2010, 2011, you can see the blue bar, which was full day kindergarten, and 2013, 2014, half day kindergarten. You can see the increase in achievement. Okay. Something that you all may not be aware of is that we do have, um, uh, I'm sorry. The, the, Wrong slide. This year, 68 out of our 212 uh, kindergarten students, that's 32 percent, uh, would have been identified at risk under the beginning of the school year dimple. So, you know, we had 32 percent of our students coming in pretty low that were, you know, coming in without any kind of prior schooling or just coming in, you know, being at an at risk state that that they were going to be needing a little bit more help. Back to I have to keep it quiet. This wouldn't change with a full day program because these are kids coming into the school. Correct. So that that percentage would be the same. Correct. Okay. Right. Right. What we would say in a full day program, they'd be with us longer throughout the day to be able to hopefully get them. But the thirty-two percent will still be. Yep, it would be. Yeah. This is a Title One yearly comparison based on. Title I is a federal program um, that we qualify for based on pre or reduced lunch. However, students qualify for the reading support based on academic need. So in the, we are comparing a la the last year of full day, which is 2010-2011, to half day 2013-2014 in each school and we used kindergarten and first grade for comparison. So in kindergarten at Birdsboro Elementary Center, we had 23 children qualified for Title I reading support services in 2010-2011. And those, those numbers might not have changed. There, there may have been 28 students coming in even if we had a full day program. I think the bigger um, number to look at is what happened in first grade and the fact that the numbers had doubled um, between those, you know, if we're looking at those years, and again, we can provide the board with additional information with past years, but it's just showing that, you know, the, the students aren't getting the same amount of time to be supported through Todd One, which is just not enough time in the two and a half hour day program. Sorry. So, there you go. 
we, um, these are students that are receiving reading support beyond first, second, and third grade, uh, or I'm sorry, kindergarten, first, and second grade. These are, this is reading that is in place right now currently. 12% uh, of students in third through fifth grade are receiving additional support. 60 students at Birdsboro that receive additional support. And at the middle school, we're you know, continuing to see a trend. There's 127 <coughs> students that are receiving additional support. So we're hoping that if we had a, a kindergarten, full day kindergarten program in place consistently and you know, ongoing, that these numbers would hopefully be going down because we would be putting our funds and our efforts into the, the early, you know, years of their education. So right. what we mean by reading support is any kind of instruction that is delivered outside right. they're pulled their, out. They're pulled their, their regular out. instruction. For the students in middle school, those students did have full day kindergarten, correct? Because they're in grades six through eight. So they would have been having had full day. Um, our, yeah. Yes. Because well, that percentage looks kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> right in between the half day students. And I, I, you're, you're correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. And not only that, Mrs. Corsi, but I assume they were part of the 15 and 12 percent in grades 3 to 5. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that fits. Well, it, it just is showing that the amount of money that we do still put into programs at the upper ends of the of the grade levels. We're, we're, we're hoping, again, by having a consistent program without any you know stops to it, that we would be able to work on that. And that's something that we would be focusing well, on. Well, the point that I'm trying to make is that we had that with six through eight, and we're still, we still have 14% who need reading help. So presumably moving forward, if we do go back to full day, we're still gonna have that. Hopefully not. I'm hoping that, that we're gonna be able to allocate. The history tells us we will. Yeah, it does, but I, I'd like to. That's only one grade that had, that didn't have full day. Third grade up there is the only one, I know it's on a fourth grader, is the last grade to have full day kindergarten. So those are all the percentages of mainly people who had full day. So those numbers are actually going to go up. Right, right. That, that's, that's the Before they come back implication down. of this so. slide is that they would go up. We're just trying to show you uh, all around. The those are the numbers, numbers we're aiming for. They're going to get worse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, this is the administration's okay. presentation. Go, but thank go ahead, you. Rob. This slide uh, <clears throat> shows us the number of students um, participating in the backpack program. I don't know if you're familiar with our backpack program, but we do send 60 students home each week at Monocacy Elementary Center, where 14% of the students with a backpack filled with food to get through the weekend. Uh, we do the same thing, but we have a few more students at Birdsboro Elementary Center. We send home 73 students or 19% of the student population with a backpack of food each Friday. Number of students that are receiving free and reduced lunch. Overall, the Daniel Bunary School District as a whole, there's 856 students. 25% of our students are receiving free and reduced lunch, which is our you know lowest socioeconomic group. They're also the group that um, contributes to our federal funds coming into our school district. So based upon the number of students at Monocacy Elementary Center, for example, because we now are encompassing Birdsboro and Monocacy together under one roof, 34% of our students there and 39% at Birdsboro are our media students. And so we're, we're just showing this slide to say that we do have some differentiation between our socioeconomic groups here in the Daniel Bonaire School District. That there, you know, the, it's much lower at Amity that there's not as many students that would qualify that Amity doesn't qualify at all for uh, Title I dollars, but Birdsboro and Monocacy, and if we wanted to allocate money to the middle school, they would most likely qualify, but we try to keep the money at the kindergarten through, you know, second grade um, level. So that's just showing, you know, the, the, the difference in, in our, our community. We wanted to also include um, numbers from Immaculate Conception so that you know the, the committee knows that, yes, in um, the last year of full day kindergarten, there were 13 students that went there, and in 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14 seemed to be a spike, and then now again, 14, 15. The numbers pretty much have stayed the same. What, why we've included this is to show that we, with our proposal that we're proposing today, those numbers aren't going to impact the number of, student, the number of classrooms that we're looking for additional. Um, kindergarten classrooms, but we feel that we're going to be able to absorb them. 
um, based upon the numbers that are coming in from our census and projections of what our kindergarten numbers will be. This next slide speaks a little bit to the achievement gap that we all schools uh, face. Children who enter school with limited vocabulary knowledge grow more discrepant over time from their peers who have rich vocabulary knowledge. Beginning in fourth grade, the reading scores of low-income students begin a steady decline that becomes steeper and steeper as students move into higher grades. The decline is primarily due to lower vocabulary and background knowledge. And the state of Pennsylvania on a whole has identified you know, the fact that we do have low socioeconomic groups and they have been putting the funds into early education. Um, there are so many schools across the Commonwealth that have not only full day kindergarten, but they also have um, a pre-K program. You know, we're, we're not proposing pre-K, but that's where the state is at, that's what school districts are starting to invest in. If you look at your big city schools, or even if you look down the road at Pottstown, they have a full day kindergarten program and they have a, um, a pre-K program as well because they really you know, believe that you need to get those students early on. In order for us to expand kindergarten from our half day to, to full day, we're proposing that we need five positions based upon current enrollment, based upon the census for next year, based upon our trends, we're figuring that we're going to be right in the, the same area, so it would be additional five teachers. Uh, what we would do would be we would reassign current staff. With that, we're saying that we can save money, the district money, it's not going to cost us anything. We have two teachers that are going to be retiring. One teacher is at the very highest point. Um, he's the teacher that has the most years in here. And the difference of their salaries and new teachers coming in would you know, save the district $193,000 um, and some change uh, there. You also are going to save that $93,000. No matter what you do, it, 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 because it's not going to cost us anything in addition, um, you're going to save that $93,000. The total savings would be 286. With that being said, I know that if we raise class sizes, if we um, reduce you know, teaching staff based upon declining enrollment, that there is um, a number that would be there that would be a savings overall, and that number is right around $486,000, I believe, is uh, what the business office has provided me, $463,000. So, but I would not recommend raising the class sizes to 27, 26 in fourth and fifth grade if we can't you know, support the, the, the full day program. That would not be my recommendation. Um, again, we're looking at potential revenue and savings, increased revenue by lunch sales. We also have a group out there that are early intervention students and because we don't offer a full day kindergarten program, those parents have the right to remain at the first county intermediate unit for their child or their um, school age program. Roughly that program costs about fourteen thousand dollars a student if the student doesn't need some intensive um, well I don't want to say intensive if they don't require a half day kindergarten on top of that we can pay, we would pay $139 a day for time to be in our half day program and then the, the other half of the day they're getting OTP all of which we provide already in our school. So we're hoping that we could keep you know, the numbers down. There's not been a trend there. Um, the possibility of more students going into that is always there. Uh, that we do have 20 students that are eligible. We have not seen 20 students go in there, but you never know, it's a parent's choice. Um, and if we at least have a full day program to offer, we, get, we can at least counter that. Um, the National Research Council reported reports state children who attend well-planned, high-quality early child programs in which curriculum aims are specified and integrated across domains tend to learn more and are better prepared at mas mastery the complex demands of formal schooling. That's what we're saying will be accomplished by the whole day program. We're not saying that, that our teachers aren't doing this. I don't want to, you know, for one minute say that our kindergarten teachers aren't working very hard in maintaining quality programs in a half day, it would just make it that much easier to really grow the students if they had more time for them. 
The Ready to Learn block grant, that provides Pennsylvania school districts with financial assistance to implement effective educational strategies, practices, initiatives to improve student achievement. That money is really geared towards um, putting teachers in place for pre-K and kindergarten. With that being said, Mr. Hurley, we're not looking to tap into that money because if that money goes away, it's not there and our kindergarten program could be over. We're saying we can do this with the current budget, the way that it's being presented right now, without increasing the budget in any way and without having to tap into those dollars to pay for salaries. We would utilize that money to support the kindergarten to 12 programs that we have and the money can go to support the Keystone testing that's an, an allowable expense, to continue to support curriculum writing and aligning curriculum in K-3, to continue to support staff development, professional development for teachers, that's an allowable expense. But a lot of the big expenses right in the beginning are all about early childhood learning. It's really geared towards kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, um, making sure that we are able to provide those, those, um, those programs. So, in closing, this is not a debate it's over half day versus full day. That I don't want anyone to walk away thinking that that's what it is. It's a proposal by myself, my administration, that we view full day kindergarten to be extremely valuable and best meeting the needs of our early childhood population in the Daniels Area School District. We understand that nothing replaces the time that a child spends with a parent. However, due to the number of single parent families, more families needing double incomes, children are spending less quality time interacting with their parents. I know for a fact that we have about 100 um, students who are in our kindergarten program right now and they are either going to daycare before they come to kindergarten or after they're going to kindergarten and then or they're going to babysitters. So they're not all going home. Um, our teachers have worked very hard to have their students meet the end of their <coughs> benchmarks in our current half-day kindergarten. But as you know, um, the data shows, there has been a decrease in students being proficient at the end of the year and an increase of more intensive students going into first grade. And again, we will support that data with um, extra years going back for you. Next. Um, we'd like you to look at expanding the full-day kindergarten program as an opportunity, much like AP classes, the World Language, VOTEC, Coral and Band programs, athletics. All of these programs that we have in place that are not requirements by the Department of Ed, that are investments that this board and boards in the past have made and supported. Um, and we feel that full day kindergarten isn't any different. It's an investment we're recommending at the beginning of childhood education. Unlike the other investments listed above, every incoming student to the Danny Guarneri School District would benefit from this. Those other programs, they're, they're not, not every single student has their, their for them, but this at least we know we would be capturing, capturing every student coming in. Um, we have to remember that our children in this district are not coming from the same socioeconomic backgrounds, and by expanding kindergarten, it levels the playing field for those who don't have the same opportunities. The fact that we have 133 children that go home um, each weekend with a backpack program, and 25% of our students receive free at reduced lunch, it just shows that we do have families that are in need. Um, and most importantly, expanding to a full day kindergarten program will not incur any additional costs in any way. In fact, by expanding the program, the district saves $93,000 right at the top. And in the long term, it could save our district money by reducing costs for future interventions and hopefully keep down those special ed costs. So we thank you very much for your time and attention. And um, that concludes our presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mrs. Torsha. I guess the floor is now open for questions, comments, discussion from the committee. Uh, would anybody like to start off the discussion? Do yeah. we have any, I guess, I can't let it absorb for a second. I, I was wondering, I know you said we were, uh, one of the two districts in Berks County that only have half day. Yes. Who's the other one? Um, I would be interested to see how our scores, our proficiency scores, or those dibble, dribble, dribble <laughs> the scores, um, would compare to theirs. Yeah, to another half day program. Um, and 
if theirs are, are higher, maybe it would be worth investigating. Whether we go to full or half day. But if, if there's other scores out there, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in how our double scores compare in general, so, because they just seem, I don't know what, I don't know what good proficiency scores are yeah. in kindergarten, but even when we had the full day score, it didn't look good, really promising. I mean, if, if our kids were scoring 35 proficiency in, in other subjects, they'd be failing, correct? And, and I, I don't know if that made it, maybe it didn't. Turn your microphone on. You push the, the gray button. <laughs> And I, I just want to state that it's that it's not so much about how we're comparing to anyone other than ourselves. Um, again, I feel that if we're going to look at this program as an investment, you know, to our students' education, to the community, that I'm recommending that this would be the time to do it because we would be able to do it without any type of um, additional cost, and that. You know, we would be able to keep it long term. That looking at the projection that Mr. Uh, Small had put together, we sh we wouldn't have to lose you know this program to continue to balance the budget. And that that would be one of my concerns, and why I'm, I'm interested in some of the data because my concern is we're sitting here in four years, and we're saying, well, the the kids that have 27, 28 kids in fourth and fifth grade. Their numbers are now declining, and now we have to bring back smaller classrooms, and how do we pay for that? So I don't, I don't want to get in a situation right. that we're looking at cutting it again. But we're, we're looking at utilizing the money that is coming in from the Ready to Learn grant to be able to target those classrooms where we know that the numbers are going to be sitting higher, that we know that those funds will be able to, to do that. You mentioned earlier in the presentation how you didn't want to use new state money cover mm -hmm. kindergarten in the event it goes away and kindergarten go with it. Um, if the intent is to fund it out of our own budget, where is the harm in getting that state money now with the understanding that if it goes away, we'd be able to fund kindergarten through our own budget? If that money is out there, why wouldn't we take advantage of it? We, we certainly can. Um, the advice from our business manager was for us not to consider, and, he, and Lauren's not here right now, but he said that if we can do it without going into that, that that's, that's a good way to start. However, if we want to allocate half of it, we, we get $370,000 for the Ready to Learn grant. If you would want to take half of that and put it towards teacher salaries, I but would... we're already... So we get that amount of money regardless. It's Correct. just how we choose to allocate. Correct. Oh, okay. so but, but you, there's not additional money out there that we could... No. It's how money. we're using it. And because you, we cannot use it towards a half-day program, it can't offset that. It can only... But at the bottom, at the end of the day, it doesn't affect the bottom line at all. Correct. Okay. We're getting, right. Okay. That's all. Right. Never mind. We're just, you, we're just allocating that money into places that so that we're using it. We want to make sure that if the state's giving us $370,000 that we're using it. Um, and Mr. Matz has been one of the people that that's been able to benefit as a result um, and making sure that we can get the technology to the different grade levels that we need. So uh, I, I think you know that you know, in, in general uh, you know, conversations, I think you know that uh, I, I lean towards the program. But you know, in all fairness, the, the first slide you had out there uh, where 429 districts have kindergarten, that does include ones that are best at risk, not, not full day across the board. No. The, the um, my understanding of that well that that was information that was given directly to us from the state correct that, that would, there are 429 school districts that have full day kindergarten programs I, I think I think part of those are at risk I don't think they're all 100 percent full day uh, I be, I you believe that it? the difference between the 429 to the I, I think there might be like 60 or so in there that, that are just at risk mm -hmm. okay and I, that's not my understanding of what the information they gave us but. I, I Okay. Yeah, we can definitely check that. Absolutely. You know, and I also, you know, the, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's obviously you understand that it is a, 
I know you focused on the not costing the district any more money, but knowing the, the makeup of our board, I mean, you're going to have a fight where we can save money. I mean, there is no question about that. Uh, by by remaining some, some teachers. Okay. So um, I think you need some more some more data to to show me. Only taking only taking those couple of years really. I mean, is there any way, I uh, know you said there's no data available from when we were half day before, uh, were we using the same testing testing services at all? Can we go back and get any I don't know data? if it's been... I don't remember how long we've been using tables. I don't know if we've been using that. Okay. Um, is there any other factors that you could attribute uh, to the fact that our numbers skew so much for special needs or special education kids, or uh, I mean, it does seem like a, like a, like a pretty large differential there. I mean, are, are you attributing solely to the fact that it's, it's coming from a, a full day? No, but, but what we're hoping to do is catch the That would be per a student's IEP. 
So those are students that are pretty significantly delayed that in order for us to be able to provide them FAPE and for us to keep those monies here in the school district, it's for that specific group, but it's not just students that you know are not achieving. But we are providing already four. Like I think there's like there's four or five students that are in that position. Okay. But it's per their IEP and it's specific to their IEP. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted some clarification yeah. on that. So you had mentioned um, busing, a cost cut in, or cost avoidance in busing, and then also an increase in revenue through the lending program. But in the, there was another slide that showed like 286,000 saving, and that was by reallocating. Well, that that was by um, if the way that I want to or the way that we want to be able to put this program in place is by reassigning teachers. I know that I have two teachers that are retiring and the difference in their salaries to a new teacher's salary comes out to that amount of money that was on the slide, 200 and um, I'd have to look exactly, but it's like 246,000. That included the busing, I thought. No, well the bottom line did, yes, the bottom number. It was 193 or 196 that came out to the difference between those two teachers current salaries and what a salary for a first year teacher would be the following year. So that would be a cost. Or that would be a savings in what's in our budget. Because right now their salaries are in our budget. We don't have any furlough that would come back? No, we do not have anyone that's out on furlough that would come back to um, replace those teachers, no. And I would honestly, I, you know, again, kindergarten is one of those things where we're not 100% sure until closer to you know, August that we know exactly how many classrooms we're gonna need. So if our numbers are not coming in and they're not growing and I need four classrooms opposed to five, then I would say that I don't have to replace one of those retired teachers. So that, that whole teacher's salary would be a savings and I wouldn't ask for to keep that. I, I'm not gonna keep more than what I would really need. Does this presentation or do your numbers and your budget figures more importantly take into account students who may go to parochial school now in order to get a full day program and may go to some of those other right. schools? Because I mean, some of those may come back. We, we did day. look at uh, our biggest you know competitor for kindergarten, which is Immaculate, and we did list those numbers, and we saw that there was an increase from the last year that we had full day to currently, and it's gone from the last year they had 13 students that went, and then the following year that we went to a half day program they had 21 students and then it was like 24 students and then there was a big jump one year to 31 but then it dropped down to 21 so yes we took into account that we'd be able to absorb those students into our program as well I just want to let the board know the kindergarten registration is March 16th that's the week. I, I, I couldn't get this I couldn't get this in there sooner. So I, I just want to let you know that that's where it's at. And you know, again, it, it's a proposal. It's it's my you know. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring this to all of you. That that this would be the time to be able to do it. And I do believe that we can support it um, moving forward. So thank I, you. I do appreciate um, you're bringing you're looking out for our, our little youngest learners. Torch. I really do, and I know that um, whenever it comes to these the children of this year, you're very responsive. You're, you're responsive to. It. I'm very impressed with how you uh, respond to the needs of our community, and I really appreciate that about you. Um, with that said, I do see this as sort of off the focus of where, where we've been going, what we've been talking about, and actually maybe putting a damper on our district level plan where we identified concerns about advanced learners at the elementary level, concerns about writing, and concerns about the SAT scores dropping. So we're talking about shifting um, some of the burden to elementary level via increasing class sizes. And that seems and, to be and conflict in, in conflict with our needs. And I know in committee, I thought we kind of addressed our, uh, we were building the kindergarten through partnerships with Alberni and Iraq. I don't want to hear about all that exciting, you know, venture. And I feel like this is like a, a huge change in direction out of the blue. And my own personal, you know, uh, goal for curriculum has been to bring back some 
enrichment to the high school experience. Our kids have been, you know, uh, robbed of an enriched program up there with all the cuts, and I, I kind of felt that personally that was my concern. Um, the high school level hasn't taken as many hits with um, things as, as what the elementary has. And with regard to where our focus is, I tried to partner with the YMCA program to bring something in. Nothing came in. We had one child sign up for their program that was housed, it was being proposed to be housed in Monocacy Elementary Center. As a result, we have not had Alvernia reaching out. I believe that they have started to lose some of their education, their students coming into education. Um, I would have to refer to Mr. Hurley to see how many student teachers we have coming in currently from Alvernia. But we are certainly partnering with them and, and trying to support their, their, um, their student teachers. But what I was hoping was going to grow with help from the YMCA has not, has not panned out. And so that's why I'm looking at you know, being able to do this. And it's not going to stop any of the initiatives that we want to move forward with at the high school. This Ready to Learn grant is going to be able to support you know, some of the things that we want to do up there with regard to keystone testing and the fact that we know that we're going to have to have them in a keystone prep class if they have not been able to be proficient so that we're not going to be taking funds away from being able to continue to promote um, more AP classes. And I think with the high school principal transition, that, that we're really in a transition year, and for him to be able to get in there and really get his hands into the high school schedule and um, to, to be, for him to enlighten us with his ideas, because I know he has a great uh, lot of them, and they're not, he knows that they can't be cost in intensive. So what he's looking at is restructuring as well. So, but but um, at the high school level, we've lost a, a, a halftime gym. We lost drivers training. We lost um, one one business, but the numbers were going down, and that's how we could you know lose that. Um, we lost um, halftime positions that we combined to a full time position in biology. So. They haven't taken a, a, a huge, huge hit, but repeatedly every year the elementary program has. We have reassigned teachers year after year to different levels to, you know, to um, be able to counter the furloughs. Um, we have lost, you know, language at the middle level. Um, but really, our biggest hit, you know, was the kindergarten that we had a program and like so many other school districts that are moving forward and, and continue to put the full day program, we took a step back. And, and so I just feel like that's a focus that if we can bring it back, it, it would be a great place to start. So. Mrs. Bikes, may I? I actually have, I know it surprises you, I have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. We only have 15 minutes. Um, this meeting has to end in about seven minutes because we have a voting meeting following. <laughs> I do want to say that the, the kindergarten teachers I'm familiar with, I think are fantastic. I think they do a terrific job. Uh, I don't know that one the full day would change that, but my understanding is you would like to do this for March 16th. It's not going to get on the voting meeting tonight, obviously. Mm -hmm. The board needs more data. Before it could even be voted on, it would have to be presented to the whole board. My uh, is without going into everything else I have here, is I really think you ought to look at this for 2016-17. I really can't see it being this year. But rather than me take up a lot of time, there's a lot of people came here tonight, and I appreciate that. They have about five minutes to speak. I think you ought to turn it over to public comment. Okay. Um, we will go to public comment. I think we have a little bit more time than five minutes. Uh, the next board meeting does start at 7.30, so we do need to wrap up soon. But at this point, I sensing from the discussion that there isn't a desire at this point to advance this in a recommendation at the board level. It seems like we want more information. Uh, so I guess there's no need to vote on a recommendation tonight if we don't think we're ready. Um, but with that being said, does any other board member have any comments before we go on to public comment? Is that that deadline, is that set in stone? I mean, is that something that we arbitrarily decide, or is that? Well, we have to. <clears throat> We have it um, publicized as kindergarten registration begins, and we're, we start a little bit later than a lot of school districts do to begin with. Um, you know, 
certainly we could do a survey like Mr. Rathgab suggested and ask parents if they would be interested in a full day and how many would be interested in a, in a half day. And, you know, if they would complete that, then we'd at least have that data and be able to turn around and say, well, we're offering it. But I don't know how that impacts anyone who is thinking about not enrolling their child because we don't have the, the full day program. Right. They won't be able right. to make that The other thing I was going to say, Connor, was that I think the best case scenario that I could see uh, trying to get the actual votes on the full board uh, would be to, to possibly do a, uh, an at risk this year and then look to do the, the full year uh, next year if that was uh, made it possible. My only concern is that. I don't. I, I would not be able to present the same proposal of it not impacting our uh, budget next year. I would be afraid to say that you know even though in our budget it the it says that there's a posi two positions could be um, lost with regard to declining enrollment. When I look at my enrollment and I look at the numbers, I'm not sure where that's going to occur because we are you know, getting to a place where we're plateauing at the, the earlier levels and they're going into classes that are the same size. So we're going to have to see maybe that declining enrollment occurring at the upper end and I wouldn't be able to easily reassign to teachers because of the certification issues. So- Mrs. Torsh, I, I was trying not to go into this, but you're, you're saying that cost. There is a cost. Our enrollment, the board is bound by state law to only reduce staffing according to a declining enrollment. Our elementary school alone enrollment dictates that we lose five to six teachers this coming year. It's a half million dollars. So that, that's a fact. That half million dollars, if you don't do it, you're adding back into the budget. Even if we have no cost this year, if you look at our five-year budget, we're, we're a million dollars in the whole next year and a million and a half the following year and two million dollars the following year because Pizer's in, increases two million dollars a year. So you can't say there's no cost. You can say there's a cost avoidance. Okay. But, but there's a cost. There, there's a cost avoidance and more importantly though, Mr. Martino, there aren't five positions that can be cut without impacting class size. So, oh no, yes there are. Oh no, there's not. Well, I've done I've done the math at the elementary level. We can debate that another time. We can. But the, the, the other fact is, I do not want to implement a program in two years from now, I can take it away again. Well, and looking at the budget that our, that has been proposed by our business manager, it, 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 according to him and sitting with his department, you know, he did not tell me that this would be something that would have to go away. So. All right. Mr. The, the cost again of those two salaries, or the, the value of the two salaries, I think you said was 188? 193. It was somewhere around there. Can't we clearly agree then that that is the cost of the program and that would be the continuing cost to do this? Because if we didn't have this program, we would then have that in the general fund. Can't we agree on that? Well, I would I would not disagree that if we there are two grade levels that are lower numbers going into to higher numbers that there are two positions that could be furloughed at this time if we increased our numbers in the areas that I projected for fourth and fifth grade to be able to support the program then we're looking at at um, children sitting in seats with 26, 27 students in a chair. So that's where those other numbers were, were coming from. But there's seven um, second grades at Monocacy that are feeding into six third grades, and those numbers would be high if we went from those seven classrooms into six for third grade, for, for a third grade class. Again, that's my educated opinion as an educator, so. Okay, we will now move on to public comment. If you have anything to say, please state your name and your address. It's limited to Daniel Boone residents at this point. If you don't have any public comment or you'd like to think about this a little bit, um, we'll certainly have more opportunities in the future. Uh, this will have to go to the whole board. Um, we're going to implement it. And I'm sure it will come up again in our committee. Thank 
Yeah. Hi I'm Lori Hogue. Amazing that 10 years ago I was standing here arguing the same argument when we were going from half day to full day and people didn't want full day then. So um, I'm not here about kindergarten actually. I'm here for the high school. Um, and I love it that you put all this effort into the elementary. I think it's great. I would love to see that just as much effort put into some of the stuff at the high school level. I want to thank the curriculum board for coming up with new classes in the course selection. It's awesome. I had a child who graduated two years ago who didn't have a lot of options. Um, so I'm very happy that my current students that are at the high school have options. Um, I've had a big issue with the math program at the high school. I have consistently had issues with the math program for the last six years. Um, I have students who uh, I ask and I ask what can I do for my student. Um, I have students who are A students, but consistently in math they're having difficulty and I am paying $300 a month to have tutoring for my children in math. I ask teachers what are the issues that are going on? How can I help you? How can I be an advocate for you as a teacher? Do you need new curriculum? Do you need additional resources? What is it that you need? And all I could get from the teachers was, well, there's a lack of consistency. And to quote you, um, by having consistent programs is how we can be successful. I'm getting from your own teachers that there is no consistency between middle school, elementary, middle school, and high school. And going between the individual schools. So that's coming from your teachers at the high school, but there's a lack of consistency. Um, there is a true issue that I have a freshman who was part of your first full day kindergarten program. She has been a very successful student. We are now in the high school. She is a straight A student, except for math. She's in all honors classes, has A's in all our honor classes, except for math. We have a C. I find it extremely unacceptable that if she was a C student, I'm not asking her to be an A student, but if she was a C student, that I wouldn't be up here arguing. Um, but her grades constantly consist at one time we're getting a, a 90 on a test, the next time it's a 60, then it's an 80, and there's inconsistencies within that class. I'm asking for as much diligence as you put into doing it for the younger grades that we also look at the high school grades. I asked the math teachers, do we do data collection and analysis? No. Do we have um, uh, committee meetings with each department heads? I was told we had one at the first beginning of the year. They haven't had one since. So there's not a collective going on at the high school either. We have teachers in the annex. We don't even know teachers in the news side. They're not even talking. So I'm asking for those of you who are elementary, should be mad at the high school teachers because of all the hard work that they have done. I've had some of these teachers. I loved them. I loved elementary school. I loved my middle school. But at the high school, I've been really frustrated with the lack of enthusiasm by the teachers, the lack of going the extra mile, um, the lack of just caring about if the students are successful or not. I mean, I said to the student, my daughter really had a hard time in this section. Are you going to go back and review it? No, I have to stay on track. But she doesn't get it, she'll just have to stay after school to figure it out. Those are not comments that I want to hear. And, and I can just tell you that with um, the new incoming principal, yes. that these are things that I have addressed with him that are concerns that I have myself that have been brought to my attention and that he is going to be looking into right off the bat. So with regard to your data collection, he's already started having conversations. He's already started setting up meetings with the staff. So we are we are going to be addressing those concerns. I, I'm here today because, like I said, I've been writing emails to guidance counselors, to the principals, through Mac and Oil, through Hangle, and getting no response. So now I'm to the point where Hey, I'm here at the Griffin Board, and if I have to, I'll stand up at every school board meeting and start complaining. I don't care if there's repercussions against my children because I'm doing this for all the kids. Mm -hmm. I could bring a list of parents. There are 32 children that go to the same tutor for a down year in high school. 32. This tutor is making a lot of money because we can't manage to teach math. Well, parents, I, I've also expressed my concerns, I think we're all, I think we're all aware of our, <laughs> all right. it's, 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 it's,
Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. One quick comment on that, please. Yeah, this is how I brought up a really good point about uh, how we restructured the at the elementary level to create these professional learning centers for collaboration. Right. Well, we we, we did the same thing. at the high school. We did. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we have to get on to the next meeting. It starts at seven thirty. So unless there's any further public comment, this meeting is adjourned at seven twenty-eight.